Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. I don't know how the Nelsons are going to function up here in this pew. (laughs) (laughs) So we've got some stuff going on today. Um, We will do presentation of Bibles for some of the Sunday school kids, and then uh, we're going to do, um, uh, is going to affirm her baptismal promises um, today in um, the rite of confirmation. Uh, Please add to your prayers um, Stephen Zietz. And this week in our announcements, on Monday night, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Worship and Music Committee over at Granville at First Lutheran. Anybody who's um, interested in helping plan and shape worship, uh, really basically from January forward, uh, please join us for that. On Wednesday, the um, Norwich women will be quilting at 9 o'clock. Is that right? 9 o'clock? Okay. And on Wednesday, we also have confirmation at 3.30. That is my last confirmation class. Um, Then we will take, um, well, first I'll take senior high kids to LYO on Thursday. Then I'll come back on Friday and I'll pick up 6th, 7th, and 8th graders to take them to LYO. For Friday night. And then next Sunday is, uh, we'll go back to our regular schedule with 11 o'clock worship here at Norwich, 9 o'clock at First Lutheran in Granville, um, and it will be the fall uh, fall dinner potluck. Um, that will be my last Sunday as pastor here at Granville, Norwich. And it's been a joy to serve as your pastor for these past seven years, seven and a half years. Um, but as I move on to my new, my new call, I will step away from my relationships here on Facebook, Snapchat, those types of things. <clears throat> Not because I don't care for you, but because I need to make room to love the new people that I'm called to serve and to make room for the new person who will be called by the Holy Spirit to serve you here as well. Do we have other announcements for today? Daryl? Some on a later study. Yeah. Oh, these. <laughs> the windows got put in this week. Yes, I was going to mention that. We have new windows. Did they put them in that really windy day? They, yeah, because yeah, it worked out with the windows in my class. Yeah, they need a place to work out the windows and work out as well. Oh, good. They said Remember that day when we all watched everything just kind of blow around up here? <laughs> it came through the window. <coughs> so we're grateful for our new windows. Um, so hopefully um, the breezes of winter won't join us inside anymore. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, we don't need sticks to keep them open? Okay. So. Anything else? All right. So um, you'll need a bulletin and you'll need um, the booklet thing that's a little um, heavier. So let's stand and turn to our booklets for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, Together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
gathering songs on the back of your bulletin, the church song.
continue with the canticle of praise. <laughs> reading from Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was pulled out of his joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. <coughs> then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have stood with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place, at saying, for I have seen God's face, God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun looks upon him, and he has him losing because of his hair. The word of the Lord. Amen.
Somebody gonna help me with these Bibles? Who did they go to? <laughs> bring your bring your bulletins because you got parts. You got parts to say. Bring your bulletins.
together. We rejoice in this step in your journey with God. We pray that God will guide you, your family, and us as you use this Holy Bible in your home, in your classes, and in our worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's world. And then you guys have this line here somewhere. No, nope. where'd we go? This one, down here at the bottom. Word of God. Word of A lamp to our path. Thanks be to God. All right. Let's have a little round of applause for these guys. All right. So a cool thing to do is you take all this stuff off it, and then you can ask people to write in your Bible, put their right where their favorite verse is and sign their name beside it. Yeah? So then then you have something to go on. And then you can remember all the people that are part of your church family too. Alright? Okay. You guys can have a seat. I'll invite the rest of you to stand and we will continue with the gospel affirmation in your booklet. children as much as we love them, 
but rather the Word of God, living in us through Jesus Christ and made known to us through the Scripture. One of the beginning activities I like to do with confirmation students is have them tell me what Bible stories they know. I've done this with adult groups as well, with similar results. The vast majority of what they know are the Old Testament stories of Sunday school. Creation, Adam and Eve, maybe Cain and Abel, Abraham and Sarah and Isaac, maybe Jacob, Joseph and his coat of many colors, some stuff about Moses in a basket, the ten plagues of Egypt, and the ten commandments. Because they sang it in school choir a few years ago, some of them are familiar with Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. Occasionally someone knows about Jonah, or Daniel in the lion's den, or his buddies Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So outside of Genesis and Exodus, they tend to be unfamiliar with much of the Old Testament. In the New Testament, they know about the birth of Jesus, the crucifixion and resurrection, plus a few of the parables and the miracles of Jesus. And when we start confirmation, they don't necessarily know how to connect the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's hard for them to imagine that the Bible is more of a library than it is a book. Because really it is 66 books in two testaments. 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. It was written by more than 40 authors over the course of 1,800 years. 2,930 characters appear in 1,551 places. All of it to create one story. A story about how God is working in the lives of God's people throughout history with persistent love. The Bible is a book of faith. In our second reading for today, Paul commends Timothy to the word of God, urging him to continue in the Christian faith. <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, Paul had words of appreciation for Timothy's mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, who had raised him in the faith. Today's reading reiterates that Timothy has been instructed in the scriptures since childhood. And Paul reminds him, and us as well, that through the study of scripture, we can learn to walk in the ways of God. In our baptismal liturgy, when infants or young children are baptized, we ask the parents to make some promises to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that their children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. And while I encourage biblical literacy, memorizing Bible verses isn't the goal. The purpose of studying studying sacred scriptures, of learning those basic tenets of the Christian faith, is so that in word and action we become Jesus' representatives of radical love by caring for others and all of creation and working for justice and peace, which is how the gospel reading ends, with words about God granting justice. Usually I get all wrapped up in the story about a judge who grants a woman's claim merely because she is annoying. And I wonder if the call to be persistent in prayer is just a bother to God too. Then I read a commentary about Francisco Garcia who says that this is his favorite 
parable. It's not even tracking my top 100, but I will give it a little more consideration based upon his words. This parable speaks to the divinely written call to pursue justice while also grounding it in the context of living a faithful life. It urges us to resist the tendency to think about prayer in a simplified and unidirectional way as merely words we offer to God in a transactional and hierarchical manner. In other words, the idea of praying to God the Father up in the sky. It also makes clear intimate and inseparable connection between prayer and justice. This parable invites all who would receive it to think of prayer as an active, dynamic, relational, and even mystical enterprise between God and us. As is the case in so many of Jesus' parables, the character who, character who takes center stage is marginalized in many ways. Widows in an ancient patriarchal society were seen as charity cases. In this parable, Jesus challenges the assumption of a helpless widow, giving her agency and authority to challenge corrupt power. Because often the fight for true justice is perceived as a bother and a nuisance to those who wield power. But let's not forget that Jesus sets this parable up as one about the persistence of prayer. The widow is dogged in her pursuit of justice because she is confident that she deserves justice. She refuses to be overlooked or ignored and will not stop until she is heard. One of the most basic things that we teach in Sunday school and confirmation classes and in our worship week after week is the Lord's Prayer. That in itself is a persistent prayer for justice. Your kingdom come, your will be done. It's not prayer that wearies God, but human sinfulness and injustice. God's intent for the good creation is justice for all. God desires to bring all people into peace and harmony with one another and with God's self. Lauren Winner tells a story of her friend, a pastor's daughter, who wasn't sure that she should go through, the go through with confirmation because she wasn't certain she believed everything she was supposed to believe. Her dad, the pastor, told her, what you promise when you are confirmed is not that you will believe this forever. What you promise when you are confirmed is that this is the story you will wrestle with forever. And that is the call for all of us. Like Jacob wrestled God in the wilderness, limping away from the encounter, yet still blessed, may we forever wrestle with the word. May we be persistent in prayer. May we live into our baptisms each and every day, named, claimed, graced, and gifted, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Find that on 770 in your blue hymnal. 770 in your blue hymnal. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>
You can have a seat. I'm going to invite Isaiah forward. Bring your bones in. <coughs> Stay with you with me, my friend. All right. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Oops. Or you can head into that part. <laughs> I present a man to who deserves to make public affirmation of her baptism. Let's pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks for a man whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, these next questions are for you. Ready? Okay. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. And with all of the people of God, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered a conscious Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended in hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? People of God, do you promise to support our sister Avea and pray for her in her life in Christ? We do. We do. We have God. 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 Let's pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. All right, now I'm going to have you come up here and kneel, and I'm going to invite your family and your sponsors to come up. And we're all going to lay our hands on you. All right. So we're all we're going to all bless the baby. We're going to lay our hands on her, right? So if you can't reach your text, somebody who can, okay? Be nice for blessing her, not pulling her hair. <laughs> All right. Stir up in Avea the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of, the no of no knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. All right. Okay. So now you can turn around, get up and turn around and face everybody because they have things to say to you. Okay? Let us rejoice with Avea, our sister in Christ. 
we rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. All right. Let's have a little round of applause for you there. Do you want to grab your calendar thingy? Okay. All right. You guys can have a seat. The base can come back up. So I gave Avea a project, a couple of projects, but this is one of her projects that I gave her for confirmation. All right, so uh, we like to sing happy birthday to everybody here at Norwich. And so Avea made us a little calendar with everybody's birthdays. If we missed you, we have more of these little things that we can hang on here. And um, so we have a little calendar that Avea put together with everybody's birthday on it. with the prayers of intercession. I'll end them. Um, Lord, in your mercy, you can respond. Hear our prayer. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and in pray, prayer. Lord, in your mercy. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they will provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of all creation. Lord, in your mercy. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are lonely, especially those who've newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. We remember especially those on our prayer list and those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand up. May the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another.
Uh, so we've been singing Jesus Loves Me to a different tune for quite a few weeks now. So we're this one's this one's really a learner. I'm not so sure I know how to do this one, but we're going to give it a try. Um, I think Kristen's music might be a little different than what I've been practicing to. Who knows the song La Bamba? Offering prayers in your booklet. Let's pray together. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choir of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
Let's pray together the prayer after communion. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we are praying to strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Our sending song is Day by Day, 746 in your blue hymnal. 746. <laughs> Tommy. 
You are invited downstairs for um, cake and coffee.